What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're checking out Resolution, which is kind of a top-down action brawler adventure exploration game. Uh, from what I've seen so far, it seems to be sort of borrowing heavily from Hyperlight Drifter, and also from games like Songbringer, and sort of attempting to hybridize both of those two little games into a new form. So anyways, let's check the game on out. I very much am a fan of anything that's got really, really highly stylized pixel art, and kind of an outrun color palette. So let's do it. Alright, so first thing I notice is that I gotta plug in a controller. Unfortunately, uh, the controls are gonna be arrow key based, and so I'm not trying to mess around with arrow keys right now. It's just, nah, I'm alright. I gave it a second to try it out with Wasp, but unfortunately it's arrow keys and mouse, interestingly enough. I'm sure if we take a look, it could probably be rebound maybe. Yeah, so there you go. You can actually like rebind everything if you want to, but seeing as I'm in the middle of an episode, I'm like, eh, I'll just throw in a controller real fast. Uh, so anyways, we've plugged in a controller now, but as far as I can tell, the movement and everything else was linked to having your arrow keys and your mouse all synced up. It looks like we can actually play soccer down here too if we really, really want to. Can I kick the other kids? Looks like I can't really kick the other kids. What did they do with the ball over here? Yeah, let's go ahead and put this back into the field of play over here. That's what I think is probably the wisest idea. Uh, where did the ball end up? Where did it go? Did I kick it off like the moon? Oh, never mind. They're still trying to chase it over here. Why are you guys, like, kicking away from the goal? You know the goal is the other way, right? Are we just having, like, a fun game of, like, kick around? I couldn't tell if that right there was in the foreground or the background. I don't know if it was, like, a big pile of sludge or what it might have been. Hey, can you hear me? Ah, good. How do you feel? Can you move? Oh, so here we are. Apparently I'm a little skeleton guy. Oh, we got some swinging going on right there. Is this an enemy? What is that? Okay. Uh, whatever it is, I stabbed it to death. I don't know if it's like an Apple IIe that's just like floating around doing its thing. But it's got blood inside of it and we have exposed that blood to oxygen. Uh, definitely feeling the Hyperlight Drifter vibe right now. Although, honestly... So, taking a look at the aesthetic of the game and like the visual design, what people tend to forget before they start like leveling the finger off as like copies or rip-offs or whatever else, is that if you take a look at kind of like the angled sort of, I guess, the angled Easter colored uh, palette that Hyperlight Drifter used. They borrowed a lot of that from like Super Brothers Swords and Sorcery, you know, and so like ain't nothing new up under the sun. All you really do is take previous ideas and combine them into new things. Uh, let's see, if I destroy this stuff, does anything like drop? Do I get anything from it? I am getting some kind of currency or something from these crates, so that's good. Uh, it's not a complete and total waste of my time to be smacking around some of the accoutrement that is filling up this area. This must all feel strange. I guess I want to help, but how can I? Can you find me? Eh, there's a few little... Those are going to explode, aren't they? They're going to explode. I had a suspicion. It looks like our health meter is actually right there next to our body as well, floating around behind us. I don't know why our health meter is just, like, loose and away from our character. Sort of an interesting design. Like, I don't know if there's supposed to be a drone or something following us that has that information underneath it. But anyways, I mean, the attacks feel like they're okay. They could use a little bit more screen shake, I think, and they could use a little bit more weight to the attacks. They do feel a tiny bit light. It looks like maybe those things right there are probably health packs or something, those little red things. I don't know, our health went back up. So either our health regenerates on its own, or these little doodlies right here restore our health. Given that they're the same hue as our health meter, I'm guessing that it probably restores our health. Uh, what do we have going on over here? You seem lost. I think I can feel you. Watch it. Take it slow. I mean, or I could just dash through the middle of all of these random puddle traps and take care of business. I mean, it seems to get done. So, like, I had read some things about this game that the combat didn't feel satisfying because it was, like, really, really light and didn't really have a sense of impact. 
I, I think it could definitely have more of a sense of impact to some of the hits or whatever, but it actually feels okay to me. Like, it's not like a standout-ish thing. Like, I, before I do these episodes, I always sit down and I read a bunch of stuff, and I'll go through, like, forums, and I'll see what people are saying, and then I'll kind of, like, sit down and watch the trailers and get a feel for, like, visually how it seems to play out, and then I'll sit down and do my own deal. I like to get a feel for the game before I start actually recording my first impressions of it. Just to give me a little bit more of an angle to work from. And like one of the common complaints I think I saw was that the combat didn't feel heavy, like it felt really weightless. It doesn't. It feels like it could have more impact, but it feels good enough, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel light and airy enough to really like set me off and make me like not want to play the game. Like I have played some definite games where the melee attacks had no sense of weight to them whatsoever else. And honestly, I think that's probably one of the biggest failings that a, a combat game can have, um, in my opinion, because that's the principal way that the player is interacting with the game world is through effectively like violence and fighting. And so you want that to feel really, really good for the player. You want it to feel satisfying and visceral and tactile, and you want them to get that sense of impact and sort of that bounce on every single hit and that shake. Uh, it's dark, can you see? And if they don't get that, it can be tremendously off-putting because what your eyeballs are taking in and expecting don't match up with what your hands are feeling in the controller or with what your ears are hearing inside of the headphones. And I know that sounds really, really like kind of esoteric and it kind of sounds like woo-woo bullshit, but no, I promise you it's true. You want all of the aspects of the aesthetic to kind of come together in order to be satisfying. And honestly, like, the combat feels fine. Like, it feels fine. Like, I would say it feels fine, but not, like, good. You know what I mean? Like, it feels okay. Yeah, I feel you. You're close, and you seem calmer. I mean, not calm enough to not destroy all this stuff, because I'm definitely going to destroy all this stuff in this room. So, yeah, those are health packs right there. But, yeah, it feels fine. That was one of my big worries coming on in is because that's one of those things that'll make me shelve a game really, really quickly is if the combat is not satisfying for the player. And having seen some people bring that up as a potential flaw with the game, I was kind of nervous and I was like, eh, that might not be good. But honestly, it feels fine. Like, you get a little bit of rumble through the controller when you're going and hitting stuff. I can see how maybe the person that was saying that might have not been playing on a controller. Maybe they were playing with the PC controls. Go figure, somebody on PC playing with PC controls. Can I break that? It is giving me a hit marker and a shake when I hit it. Uh, it's also doing it when I go off the wall, though, too. So it's possible that if you're playing with the keyboard and mouse, you wasn't getting that impact because there's no rumble and there's no shake. But with the controller, I'm definitely getting rumble and shake. Hey, what are you? I don't know what you are. Ow, dude. Oh, he blocks. Okay, that's probably good to know. Okay, looks like he's got a shield. Like, before he does that little attack right there, that looks like the opening. Oh, we finished him off. It looked like he was down. I think he was throwing in the towel, but hey, I guess we'll get that extra hit on it. And I, eh, we may have just committed a war crime. I don't know. It's happened to me pretty frequently in video games. Every now and again, I think to myself, did I just commit a war crime? And I would say about, like, half to 60% of the time in video games, I may have. This is Alibi. An exceptional access specialist outlearning and outperforming the leading AI in encryption and hacking. She's the tip of the infinite empire's spear, and you're going to carry that spear into the heart of enemy territory. She will dismantle the terrorist networks from within. Assist her precisely. So apparently I'm some kind of, like, coded weapon or something? You found me, huh? Thank you. This place feels confusing. Are you confused? Looks like we need more data. Should we keep exploring? Actually, I would say that like we really need to come up with a word that describes this sort of aesthetic. Like I think that there's enough games that are taking part in this sort of like shared artistic design at this point that it needs its own name like it needs something that like mentally you can instantaneously be like oh it's like when you talk about heavy metal and you think and you think about like the genre of gent like if you're into heavy metal you know what gent is like the second you hear the word gent because it kind of unifies that overall writing style and the way the music is played and the way the instrument is used uh, this game super brothers sword and sorcery hyperlight drifter songbringer they all kind of have like this same artistic design 
uh, and now resolution obviously being added to that list. Uh, I think like it's almost it's almost like a vapor wave. Like I I don't know what to call it, man. I'm not a smart enough guy. From the color palette, I'd go to call it Outrunner vapor wave inspired. But then again, you've got sort of the slim. The slim, simplistic design of the the pixelized characters combined with like the heavy emphasis on having smooth, sort of flowing animation. Like I don't know, I can't help with the pain, but I can make sense of everything for you. Finding sources, building paths, symbols pro project from dimensional displays and lines, blocks and shapes of multicolored code. Ah, looks like it worked. Well, there you go. Let's continue on and go forward because like the running animation right there looks really really smooth as does the attack animation Although it is kind of curious how like it's got like a number of frames to make the run animation look smooth But they make the attack animation smooth while at the same time it only really uses a couple of frames Cool stuff. I don't know anything about design and so it's just interesting always notice noticing like these little unifying concepts that are taking place inside of the game and smack that out right there. I'm assuming that's some kind of currency that we're going to spend at some point. Uh, there's some kind of little robot down. I don't think he's interested in fighting, so killing him is probably pointless, but I'll do it anyways, because why not? I don't know if smacking the console would do anything for me right there. I don't even know if we can get into this area. It looks like we can't. I wanted to break that stuff to maybe get myself some loot, but eh. What if we find a memorable face? Working with veterans, I notice painful memories are easy to access. You survived a couple of fights. What's one that stands out for you? Oh my goodness. I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. Looks like a map. So we're right there. And it says that there's one down like south of us that we're supposed to be investigating. There's also a big beefy door right there. So I mean, I guess we could go through the big beefy terrifying door. I'm gonna kill that robot right there real fast. Get that out of the way. Uh, we can destroy some of these bins and move them on out. Oh, that guy is actually attacking me. I think that's the first enemy other than that initial boss that actually tried to put mitts on me. Okay, good to know. Oh, he gets chopped in half. Loverly. All right, well, let's keep on moving up this way. Nothing inside either of those crates that I really wanted to take for myself, but we can keep looking. A few more attacks down in here. I don't know. Dude, I'm, I'm a pottery-breaking fiend in games like this. I don't know if you're obsessive about it like I am. Like, I have to break every breakable object inside of every single game that I play. It is physically impossible for me to walk past, like, a breakable pot or something. It's just Zelda, tra Zelda raised me upright. Zelda raised me up red. I gotta break everything so I can get those sweet ass rupees. I feel your pulse rising. Do you feel like you're in danger? You probably won't like this. I read your people's power file. There were a lot of redactions. Apparently, like, I don't even know if we're in the real world right now or if we're in some kind of like simulation. Like, I'm not exactly sure what's transpiring. I assume that some of these concepts are going to be explained to me as I get further on into... I think these are just like little cleaning droids, dude. I feel kind of bad for murdering them. I don't think there's a point. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave the little cleaning droids alone. I don't like making them bleed blood all over the place. It makes me feel like a bad person. Look, I trust your intuition, but how am I supposed to access these terrorist networks if you don't access your memories? Interesting. And it sounds like you don't want to fill in those blanks. It's going to be holding us back. Looks like there might be something on the desk over there. What is that, a gun? Yeah, let me get it, man. I love guns. Guns are way better than swords. Deployed by the people's power to protect the people. Useful for riot control. It's called the calmer. Okay. So I can choose my item with Y, aim with right trigger, fire with X. Okay. Oh, you gotta wait for it to recharge. Okay, so it's like a riot gun. Nice. Well, that gives us more options that we can play around with instead of just using, you know, our body for our bujitsu skills out here. Uh, you get a full range of motion. You can basically, you're not locked, it looks like. 
to any particular, I mean, it does seem to naturally pull towards 45 degree angles. You can see it locking in right there, but I mean, you can aim anywhere in between too, so that's kind of nice. All right, let's see. Let me look for samples here. It probably isn't your favorite thing having somebody dig around for patterns inside your past. Thanks for waiting. Yeah, I'm sort of wondering if I'm like running around inside my own head right now. And that's like the basis. Maybe I had some contact with whatever this terrorist network is or something like in the past. And we're like digging through my own busted up brain. in order to get to the resolution that we're trying to find. Hey, that's the name of the game. Oh, he got me. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't think he would dash that far. Little dude gave me what for. Gave me a little bit of a smackdown. Uh, yeah, I did want to try out. Let's try this. Oh, I got blocked. Get that guy. All right. Oh, they're also capable of hitting each other. It's a very, very interesting factor to note. When that last one did its little dodge attack, he dealt damage to the one that was next to him. There you go, finish you off. Let's see if I can maybe fire some bullets over there. There we go. A little bit more damage out. He's going to charge me. We'll stay out of the way. Perfect. Attack pattern's fairly predictable. Like, they do that straight little line dash, and then they just kind of like bowling ball around a little bit. There we go. Take him out with the gun from a little ways away just to keep ourselves nice and safe. A little bit of health right there. I'll definitely take that. We were only missing a tiny little... Oh, okay. Now we're missing a little bit more. Which we should probably be worried about ever so slightly. I'm going to finish him off real fast. Apparently the wall just exploded open up there. Another med pack and another set of whatever that yellow energy is that we've been picking up the entire time. Does it matter if I go left? Oh, there's two of those guys that we were fighting with earlier. Okay. Well, luckily, I kind of know their patterns, so... Like, you can only really hit them after they do that charge attack right there. There we go. That one's now down. Oh, it looks like the gun affects him when he's trying to do his charge, though. Perfect. What is this? Oh, it's an elevator. It took me somewhere. Okay, I could use a med kit. My health isn't looking great, so a little bit more would probably be good. Psst, come here. We're prisoners, obviously. Trying to free us part of the fourth side quest, obviously. And you want to do that, obviously. What you need to do is find the escaped prisoner and ask for his lucky number. Then type it into the machine beneath this world, obviously. Obviously. Okay. So I need to find like some kind of login protocol or something like that and then type it into a machine underneath the world. Gotcha. That definitely isn't confusing in any way and 100% told me what I'm supposed to be doing. This... Oh. Okay. I don't know if that's like a giant death laser or what that's supposed to be. But there is another way we can go over here on the right. Or is that the way that I came from? I think that was the way I came from. Maybe we have to go inside of here. Yeah, let's try it. I do like those little in-between animations for like the elevator rides and whatnot. Sort of reminds me of Resident Evil. Resident Evil was always a little bit creepier because of that door opening animation that was in between. What a time to be alive for gaming, man. Like the, the mid to late 90s. It was such a golden age. Like, I do think that we're entering into something new right now. But it's just, it's taking its time, you know? It's trying to get itself figured out with all the specificities. We'll get there. Uh, this looks like a dead end to me. I don't see, like, anywhere that I can go on this side. Uh, this map is utterly unintelligible for me. Like, I get that the blue lines are, like, elevators that are connecting, like, the different maps and zones and whatnot. But, like, honestly, I would just take, like, a normal map any day of the week. I know they were trying to, like, stylize it or whatever, but, like, eh. So, like, the death laser right there is doing something to those little, like, rings that are going through. Maybe it's, like, a hole punch. Ah, I think we found our way. Uh, we got a dude walking around with a massive powered mallet over there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know exactly what's going to happen with the giant mallet, but it looks like I can't get greedy. I can really only get like one hit off at a time. It's just mirrored. It looked like that guy was begging for his life. Like he put his hands up like in contrition or something before I shot him. I'm getting a weird, like I've noticed a lot of the enemies try to surrender when you get them to a certain health or whatever. They'll like stop attacking and they'll just sit there and look scared. And then you have like a full on option to decide whether or not you want to finish them or not. Health is a little terrible right now. Could definitely be better. Yeah, look, see, he puts his hands up. Wonder what happens if I leave him? Like, is he gonna re-go hostile or like... Huh. It's curious. It sort of reminds me when you're playing like Undertale, for example, how like the enemies, you can choose to deal with them violently or like non-violently. And I wonder if that's got like any remaining outcome. Like, I guess if, if that's got any deciding factor over the way the storyline goes and like your character's redemption or whatever. Is if you're deciding to like show mercy, is it going to change your ending? Is it going to make things end a little bit better for the main character? Does that even matter? Is it just to make the player feel guilty about the fact that like he's finishing stuff off, you know? Like it just sort of depends. I guess I could see it going either direction. We can't get through back over there. And these big red pools over here, I have no idea what they're full of. Hopefully not blood. That would be a tiny bit morose. I was gonna say, I need health, man. I got like nothing left right now. I got like one smack left inside of me before I get laid out. Oh, interesting. So I guess it took me back to where I picked up the gun at. Are the enemies gonna respawn? Oh, they don't respawn, okay. So like, you don't have to re-clear everything like soul style if you end up dying. You can just sort of like, hoof it back to where you were and in fact it even keeps track of all the dead bodies and everything which I think is pretty sweet it's always somewhat immersion breaking for me when I go through an area and all the stuff that I've killed is like magically despawned and it's just kind of like gone as though it was never there and so I do like the fact that the game retains the dead bodies yeah, I don't like super know what you guys are attempting to do over here He should be pretty close to down, I think. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's gotta be like really, really close to dead. And I have no idea what that thing is, but I think it shot a bullet at me last time, so I think it needs to die. All right, so we got some more crates up on this side. I'm sort of waiting to see if they're gonna introduce like any new weapons. You know what I mean? Like I wanna see some new abilities, some dash slides, and I wanna see the combat get a little bit more in depth and a little bit more interesting aside from just kind of like spamming the X button as it is right now. I do think that the gun has varied up some of the com- uh, I think the- the- it's varied up some of the combos a little bit when you use the gun to kind of give you like a limited ranged option. But at the same time I'd like to see some like dodge rolls brought on in. I'd like to see- and it looks like- if you look right here it looks like there's room for like nine different weapons if that's supposed to be like fitted so it, it seems like we may have the option to have quite a few more things added to our character as the game goes along. Looks like we can go down this way. Blow that up real fast while also attempting to not blow myself up. Okay. I don't know what that little flash was right there, but uh, hopefully it's a good thing. I like how when we run, it looks like I'm pumping one fist in the air while my cape blows in the breeze. I like to think that if I had a cape that was blowing in the breeze all the time, I would pump my fist a lot too. I have a good feeling about us. Does that sound kind of funny to you? Anyways, hey look, we made it this far. Thank you, Valor. I couldn't do this alone. I'm sort of confused as to what's going on right now. I'm going to be really, really honest with you. Uh, she's saying thank you for things, and I'm just like, okay, I will accept your candor, but I don't know what I'm doing. It does look like we can somewhat climb the backgrounds, too. There's another dude up there, but it looks like this is in the way. Looks like a person. Like, that's hair that's igniting. But I guess maybe we need some kind of special tool in order to get past that.
It's a boss, isn't it? I can see you've upgraded the other arm, too. In fact, there's not a lot much organic material left at all. You're all bottle and no ketchup. But hey, I got Augs, too. So let me show you some sweet, sweet revenge. You know, I think I'm pretty good on the revenge front, actually. He does have pretty sweet Augs. I think his are cooler than mine. It does take you a second to pull out the gun. Like, your character doesn't pull the gun out instantaneously. It's got kind of like a like a stow thing going on. Let's say, if I can get some damage off right there, I'd like it. Looks like he fires three bullets. And then he's got that little spiral ability right there. But I'm not super sure that you have time to close when he's got that spiral ability up. There we go, there we go, there we go. put those ones into the wall so he kind of wasted his turn right there I don't honestly know if I can get my gun out fast enough to fire right there as much as I'd like to I think my bullets don't quite go that far either way either way we'll keep putting damage on him Oof! are you kidding again well at least I got the girl in the end yep And he gets sucked back into an interdimensional portal because confusion is the name of the game here. Uh, this game is called Resolution. As far as the art and the design go, I'd definitely give it a 10 out of 10. The game's really good looking. It's fantastically good looking. The animations are all fluid and sort of entail what's going on and what mechanic you're trying to execute, whether it be an attack or like a dodge. Uh, the combat feels fine. I would say it feels fine. It doesn't feel fantastic, but the sense of impact that you get when playing with a controller when you smack an enemy feels okay. It feels, like, passable. I could see how some people that maybe played it only on keyboard and mouse may be like, eh, it doesn't feel very tactile. I could get that. What is that, like a bow? You have been approved for the Infinite Empire Augmentation. They increase movement and reaction time. Stabilizing drugs are provided via neck injection. Oh, cool. So I've got, like, a dash run now. Oh, yeah, dude, you're, like, super fast. Oh, wow, I didn't even expect that. That's, like, blazing fast. Uh, but, yeah, if you wanted to check this game on out, if you've got, like, a little hole in your heart from beating Songbringer and beating Hyperlight Drifter and kind of, like, moving along over the years, uh, you might want to check out Resolution. Uh, the art looks good to me. The combat feels okay. Other than that, I hope that you were able to kind of get some rough idea of what this game was all about during our play session here today in 30 minutes. I'll leave a link for you down below in the description so that if you wanted to, you can wishlist it. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block was a game called Resolution, an ultra stylish action hack and slash game about moving through some kind of techno world. I don't know if it's fake or if it's real or what it is for right now, but I'm assuming that that'll probably be elucidated later on in the game. Uh, tomorrow we'll have something hot and fresh up off the indie skillet, but until then, I gotta go. Goodbye, everybody.